I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. If you are still waiting for something about Puerto Rico to bring out the president in Trump, stop. There is no president there. If you are still waiting for something about Puerto Rico to bring out the American in Trump, stop. There is no American there. If you are still waiting for something about Puerto Rico to bring out the humanity in Trump, stop. There is no human being there. Over the weekend, during his abusive, raging, panicked, paranoid tweet storms, the disaster in Puerto Rico ceased to be entirely about the wretched conditions in a part of the country that is home to more Americans than every one of our cities except New York and Los Angeles. It was transformed from mere failure. He transformed it from mere failure, from a question of how far short of success Trump's response has been and what the ultimate death toll nightmare will be even what the ultimate death toll nightmare of those who survived the storm but not the criminal neglect of the, quote, president, unquote, will be. It has also now become, in horrifying and revelatory and disqualifying terms, about this creature's damaged mind and empty soul. Trump has previously shown a lack of human empathy or even understanding. He insulted the city of London and its mayors and its victims after a terrorist attack. He attacked the physical issues of a reporter he has attacked minority groups and nationalities and equated the victims of racism with their attackers. He has attacked and mocked and reportedly still attacks and mocks a gravely ill senator to whose party Trump nominally belongs. But Trump's response following the hurricane damage in Florida and Texas did not make the situation much worse there. Thus, there seemed to be some hope that if it was still too much to expect that any crisis or problem could drag him away from his humble brags and his seeming dedication to gazing into a mirror 24-7, he at least had leveled off about not piling insult atop injury. So there was something still holding many people back from acknowledging that this man's heart does not work. That is gone now. The dead, the dying, the displaced of Puerto Rico are now, evidently, to Trump, quote, Politically motivated ingrates. The mayor of San Juan, who was out wading through wastewater searching for victims and assessing damage while Trump was playing golf and tweeting, was to Trump guilty of, quote, such poor leadership ability. Those in Puerto Rico who criticized him, quote, are not able to get their workers to help. They want everything to be done for them. There are conspiracies everywhere. The mayor of San Juan, who was very complimentary only a few days ago, has now been told by the Democrats that you must be nasty to Trump. Despite the fake news media in conjunction with the Dems, fake news critics are working overtime. The fake news networks are working overtime in Puerto Rico. Fake news CNN and NBC are going out of their way to disparage our great first responders. Because of fake news, my people are not getting the credit they deserve for doing a great job. You don't have to have a psychology degree to translate the last one. My people, he wrote. The President of the United States is supposed to be saying that about Americans in harm's way. In this case, the Americans on the ground in Puerto Rico, the ones without electricity, or without running water, or without roads, or without everything. The Puerto Ricans are not Donald Trump's people. Only the first responders are. And what matters is they are, quote, not getting the credit they deserve, which also obviously translates into something else, namely, I'm not getting the credit I deserve. If it could get worse, and face it, this is the only Trump skill we must acknowledge. This is a man who can always be depended on to make a bad situation fatal. It is that this inappropriate, horrifyingly badly timed, disgusting, amoral attack on a besieged part of America and those of its leaders who have not thanked almighty Trump for not letting them all die, it has to some degree masked an even grimmer attack Trump had already unleashed on this tragic island, an attack he has given no indication that he does not intend to go through with. September 25th, Puerto Rico, which was already suffering from broken infrastructure and massive debt, is in deep trouble. Its old electrical grid, which was in terrible shape, was devastated. Much of the island was destroyed with billions of dollars owed to Wall Street and the banks which sadly must be dealt with. Got the message yet, Puerto Rico? September 29th. The fact is that Puerto Rico has been destroyed by two hurricanes. Big decisions will have to be made as to the cost of its rebuilding. Trump is apparently laying the groundwork for not 
spending federal funds on the reconstruction of Puerto Rico, for not spending money to help afflicted American citizens, some who have lost loved ones, some who have lost homes, some who have lost everything. Trump is laying the groundwork for not helping them fully until and unless they pay up. Billions of dollars owed to Wall Street and the banks, which sadly must be dealt with. What do you think that means? That means that the money, Wall Street's money, the bank's money, is more important to Trump than the lives of the Americans in Puerto Rico that he swore an oath to protect. This is who he is. Money. All there is in life to Donald Trump is money. He did not sell his soul for it. There was no soul to begin with. But amid the wreckage of Puerto Rico and his churlish, small, egomaniacal responses to the criticism of his attention to himself and not the victims, hiding behind, enough about how Hurricane Maria affected me, what do you think about how it affected me, is something truly monstrous. Trump seems more concerned about the money that the overmatched government of Puerto Rico owes Wall Street and the banks than he is about the Americans who live there. He has been slow to save our fellow citizens. How slow we can debate. But it's what he has planned for them next that should make every American recoil in horror and realize that if he could do this after a natural disaster in Puerto Rico, he could do it in California, or Chicago, or New York, or Raleigh, North Carolina, or Bloomington, Indiana, or anywhere that he thinks isn't sufficiently thankful for him or didn't sufficiently vote for him. Sorry about all the damage, Puerto Rico. Now about your bill. Because of fake news, my people are not getting the credit they deserve for doing a great job. His people. Not the people of Puerto Rico, but the people of Wall Street and the banks and his God, money. And the 3,411,000 people of Puerto Rico, they get to share a golf trophy. Resist. Remove. Peace. My book, based on more than 100 of these commentaries, will be available presently. There will also be an audio version. It will be about 20 hours long.